don't feel like you have to use all three of those every time as well. It's okay to focus in on one for a part of the essay, and then maybe you emphasize another one of those words, such as beliefs or identities. Maybe one of those words is more important for your essay overall. That's okay. It's clear that dismantlement and reconstruction are words you want to keep coming back to, whereas words like ideologies, beliefs, identities, they all have a pretty big overlap. Identities is a little bit different, but ideologies and beliefs. Ideology, again, if to provide myself a go-to synonym, that just means your way of thinking. So I think of a way of thinking, a perspective, you could say, and a belief is a conviction you have, right? It's, it's something you believe to be true. So they're, they're pretty similar. How you look at the world and what you believe, they link pretty closely. Your identity is how you view yourself, right? Your self-concept. And, and also it just says, it doesn't say, you know, your self-identity. It says just identities in general. So you can actually link that to things more broadly if that works for what you want to argue. But I wouldn't worry too much about using ideologies and beliefs all the time. You could just focus in on one of those and identities is kind of its own thing there. And again, like if we use a synonym for identities, we can think of the self, right? How you, you, how you view yourself. How does that lead to literary transcendence? So this is where it's key to consider the relationship between two texts. And also how one text can actually produce meaning that transcends its particular context. So if Platt's work was produced in the 60s, say the 1960s, what is it about her work and what is it about what Hughes does later in his work that allows her work to actually transcend, again, definition, go beyond her particular context? How does it have new meaning that can be attributed to it later in time? Okay, so we're talking about how a text is still worth studying later in time and how actually its meaning can be fluid and how it can transform over time, especially when you look at Platt's text through the lens of Hughes's text. Right. If we look at Hughes's poetry and then we consider Platt's poetry, suddenly the meaning changes. Right. Platt's poetry in and of itself, you could argue, is transcending her own context because it's something we'll continue to study because of the concepts that it explores. Right. That universality. You go back to those general principles that you've probably heard when studying literature and you think, you know, you have talked about how certain themes are universal and they'll continue to be studied. But there are also some very distinctive aspects of a composer's style that makes them worthy of continued literary criticism and study. Ooh.